uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world. Than Trump had one hell of an interview with Axios, and I got the clip. Now, I'm also going to break down the cases afterwards and show you how the U.S. stacks up to other countries. I'm also going to give you my quick take on school openings. And if we look at another country that did that recently, how it went over there. But first, of course, this interview here on Axios with Jonathan Swan. Um, people are freaking out about this clip. I guess. I mean, it's not. I don't find it any crazier than how Trump is usually. But uh, I mean, credit here to, to Jonathan Swan for pushing back on Trump. But let's uh, let's watch this. Take a look at some of these charts. I'd love okay. to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death, yeah, per, started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in numerous categories. Uh, we're lower than the world. Lower than we're the lower world. Lower than what is that? Europe. Take in what? Look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't you can't do that. You have Why to go, can't I do that? you have to go by you have to go by where look, here is the United States. You have to go by the cases. The cases Why are not there. as a proportion of when population? We have somebody, what it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has it, where there's a case, oh, okay. the people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the US has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, because you have to go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, if, for example. 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's like, it's you, crazy you compared to other that. Things. I do. It's you on the, don't know that. Don't, you think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I an advanced won't get into country? that because they have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And they have spikes. Look, here's Germany, one. Germany, low, 9,000. Here's one right here. United States. You take anyway. the number of cases. Okay. Now look, we're last. Meaning we're first. Last? I don't know we what we're first in. As a well, take a look. Okay. Again, it's cases. Just, okay. Um, and we have cases. Because I mean, of the testing. Wait, a thousand Americans are dying a day, but I understand. I understand on cases, it's different. No, but you're not reporting it correctly, Jonathan. I think I am, but... If you take a look at this other chart... Right. Look, this is our testing, I believe. This is the testing, yeah. Yeah, we do more tests. No, wait a minute. Well, don't we get credit for that? And because we do more tests, we have more cases. In other words, we test more, we have... But, now, take a look. The top one, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. The, the top, Jonathan. If, 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 if hospital rates were going down and deaths were going down, I'd say terrific. You deserve to be praised for well, testing, they but even, they're all going you know, up. They very rarely 60,000 Americans are in hospital. If you watch the news or dying or read a day. the papers, they usually talk about new cases, new cases, new cases. I'm talking about death. Well, you look at it's death. Up. Death is way down from where it was. It's, it's a thousand death. a day. It was two and a half thousand. It went down to 500. Now it's going up death. again. Excuse me. Where it was is much higher than where it is right now. It went down and it went up again. But now it's going down again. It's, it's going, going down in Arizona. It's going down in Florida. Nationally it's going, going down in Texas. Take a look at this. These are the tests. It's going down in Florida? Yeah, it's going. It leveled out and it's going down. That's my report as of yesterday. All right. Now, what really makes this interview is the reaction from Jonathan Swan, the interviewer. Because what Trump is saying here is, of course, everything he, you expect him to say. You can almost write the script for him. Of course, he's not going to accept reality. He's going to deny reality. He's going to create his own reality and try in every which way he can to pretend that everything's fine and the U.S. is doing great. When we all know that that's not the case. And I'll get to a graph in a minute that compares the U.S. to other countries. But first, I do want to address... The weird focus here, and not just here, but in general in the media, the focus on deaths as opposed to the focus on cases in general. Because the coronavirus, even if you've had it and you've survived it, many of the people that have had the virus continue to experience long-term health effects, Once, even after they've gotten over it. So let me give you uh, one example here from CNN. This 28-year-old from the UK got it back in March. And um, since then, he continues to feel health effects. So it's been on and off with extreme tiredness and fatigue. Every day he has brain fog, difficulty concentrating, and problems with short-term memory that make reading, writing, and speaking harder. Breathing has been very difficult, he said. I don't feel like I have my full breath capacity. If I go for a walk for one minute, I'll be really exhausted. And 
a lot of people are experiencing the same effects. So if you go to, um, this is uh, sciencemag.org. Again, I always link to everything below the video in the description box under sources. But here, many of the effects that people continue to feel, uh, pain that lingers, fatigue, uh, headache, insomnia, chest pain, cough, joint pain, vertigo, skin rash, brain fog, shortness of breath, heart arrhythmia, hypertension. These are all health effects that people continue to feel even after they've gotten over the virus and is no longer in their system. And it is unclear how long this is going to last because people have had it, again, months ago, back in March, and they continue to feel this. So to just focus on deaths really doesn't give you the full picture. This is really... This has a much wider impact than the people that have, have just died from it. And even if you want to just look at deaths, I mean, this number is insane. Over 150,000 people, Americans, have died from the virus. That's insane. And right now, the cases are at 4.6 million. Now, let me show you how the cases look in the U.S. compared to other countries. Daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. This is the rolling seven-day average. Let me uh, squeeze the graph here a little bit. So you see here, U.S. at the top. Now, also, I will note um, that the little uh, downward, uh, you know, see the cases go down there a bit at the top or, or more recently. That directly coincides with the data being taken over by the Trump White House. So I did this story a couple weeks ago. The Trump administration took control of the data from the CDC. So now the Trump administration are the ones that are collecting the health information, the coronavirus data from all the different various uh, counties the, 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 and hospitals. And the numbers came down at that exact time. Now, there is some reporting. I haven't dived too much into this, but there is some reporting to suggest that there is a different methodology that the Trump White House is using when asking for the data from these uh, these counties, and that maybe is reflected right now in how the data is being presented. So the way they're collecting the data is actually different than how the CDC collected the data. Now, there is also apparently an independent way to verify these numbers. Um, as uh, from what I understand, you can still get like a scientists or healthcare professionals can still get those numbers directly from each of the health care counties and, and, and actually put the data together th themselves as opposed to just relying on the numbers from the Trump White House. So there is a way to kind of cross check the data. But I haven't really seen that done yet to paint the, a clear picture on whether or not the Trump administration is actually trying to make their numbers appear better than they actually are. But again, it have to be it would have to be quite a coincidence for the numbers to come down at the exact point that the Trump administration took control of the uh, the data from the CDC. But you see here, the U.S. up here, meanwhile, Australia, U.K., Canada, Italy, down here. And I do want to mention as well, actually, um, Israel. So when it comes to school openings, right now there's this big conversation in the U.S. about school openings. I already saw, uh, I think, uh, at least one district in the U.S. has, has opened their schools. I saw an image of... Uh, a school hallway just full of kids, like three of them wearing masks. But um, let me show you what happened when Israel opened their schools because they had really good numbers back in May. As you're going to see here, they had really good numbers back in May. You see May 20th there marked. That's when they opened schools. Now look at the numbers. They're up there with the U.S. So even if kids aren't having uh, aren't showing symptoms of the virus and aren't being as impacted by it as adults are the reality is they are able to spread it to other people like their parents like teachers and cases clearly uh, opening the schools clearly had to have an impact on this happening so and, and by the way again israel opened schools when they were at the bottom of this graph when everything seemed fine the u.s wants to open schools here at the top of the graph i just i do not understand how they how anybody thinks this is a rational decision but can't really control things can you um trump is doing what he wants 
the administration wants to pretend everything's normal, so they want to get back to school, you know, open schools up, open everything up, everything's fine, everything's normal. It's going to make it a lot worse. And all they are doing, I mean, in terms of Trump, you've seen how, like, if all he cares about, which clearly all he cares about is himself, but if even if that's, even if that's true, if all he cares about is himself and, and winning, if he wants to win, maybe actually help people, maybe actually save lives, maybe make people wear masks, maybe give people some financial help so they can stay home and not feel uh, like they're struggling and have to go out there and work, maybe do something for people. You don't win, you don't become a great leader, you don't have people love you if you just pretend everything's normal when clearly it is not.